Hey y'all, welcome to this week's episode of The Handmade Heralds. We're coming to you live from our friend's kitchen. Marcy? Yes, Rob? Why are we in the kitchen? Because this is the prettiest place to sew. But I need to make dinner in a couple hours. Yeah, but this top is only gonna take a couple hours. Don't doubt, let's go. Rob, today we're going to be making this simple churred, churred, sure you are, churred tube top. Bing. Oh, Dario. <laughs> I'm going to be using this fabric. You making a shirred tablecloth? Basically, I mean, I figured we were in the kitchen, so it was kind of appropriate. It's theme sewing. Oh, theme sewing. Yeah, okay. Love it. Yeah. Now you need to um, get out of the way so I can get this done so you can cook for me. If I end up with a pair of shorts like this, you will never see them. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> okay, bye. I love you. Sure you do. This tube top that I'm sporting right here has about 13 lines of shirring across my bust. And I made two little sleeves. And I put that in quotes because they're just extra tube tops that are not as wide tacked down to the top itself. To make a tube top without sleeves, which we're gonna do today, you need two rectangles of fabric. Chuck, can we please throw that simple equation up there for the people? Thank you, Chuck. To make your tube top, you're going to need one measurement, the width of your bust. My bust is 35 inches wide. I'm gonna multiply that by 1.5 and add one inch for seam allowance. Divide that number by two, and that's your width. My length is going to be right above my bust to wherever I want my top to hit. I like my top to hit right below my waist. I would advise adding two to three inches to the length you think that you want. Before the last step of this top, which is hemming it, I want you to try it on. I want you to put it on your beautiful body and prance around in that mirror and see where you actually want it to hit, okay? Maybe you want it a little below your waist, a little above your waist. Maybe you want it right, right under your tatas, just looking like cute and crappy. I don't know, I don't know what you want, but I want you to have what you want. So give yourself that insurance, okay? Now, when you're cutting your rectangles out, you wanna be sure that you are placing the width of your garment along the cross grain of the fabric. Your width is going to run from selvage to selvage because that grain, the cross grain, has a little bit of give to it. If you were to place the width of your fabric along the lengthwise grain, there is not as much give, if any. The crosswise grain gives you a little bit more give and that's gonna give us a little bit more boinginess. It's a word we use around here a lot is the boing, Look it up. Yeah. It's a real word. It's real. It's like this. Boing. Thank you. <laughs> that was a good demonstration. <laughs> I've got my two rectangles cut out here. Now what we want to do is finish the top of our tube top before we start any shirring. Because believe me, once you start shirring them lines, everything gets cinched and very, very funky. I'm not about making your lives finicky. To finish the top of the tube top, fold in to the wrong side of the fabric about half an inch and then fold it in again another half of an inch. Now we're going to stitch along this fold, catching all layers of the fabric and thereby enclosing our raw edges. Do this to both rectangles. some elastic for our elastic top. You can't be using any elastic that you got lying around. You can't be using your flat elastic that you use on a skirt or like your comfort elastic that you've used on your 8,000th mask. You have to use thread elastic, also known as elastic thread. This stuff is thinner. It actually looks like thread. 
it has to be this thin. It has to be thread elastic so that it can run through the bobbin of your machine. Otherwise, it's going to get all jammed up and that creates sewing sadness. And as we already know, ain't no sewing sadness happening up in her today. Okay? You're going to take your bobbin and you're going to wind this by hand. If you were to wind this with your machine as you would a regular bobbin, the machine is going to wind it up too tight and the elastic thread is going to lose all of its elasticity in the winding of the bobbin. If your bobbin has a hole at the top, thread the elastic through that hole just as you would your normal thread and then wind it very loosely by hand. Don't stretch this thread out at all as you're winding it. In fact, I like to pull a nice long length of thread off of the elastic spool and then thread it around the bobbin so that I'm sure that I'm not pulling on that elastic thread at all, even coming off of the spool. And listen, it's not going to look that pretty. It's not going to look like the most beautiful bobbin that you ever wound up. The first time I did this, I thought, surely this is not going to work because this looks jank when it's all wound up. But you know what? It works just fine. Can you see how jank that actually is? That doesn't look super even, does it? It's fine. I've done it. I'm wearing my top. It's not falling off, is it? It works. I've got a little tip for you here on how to make sure you have not overwound your bobbin. Maybe you've made it a little too full or a little too tight. What you're going to do is drop it on a hard surface. Not from a great height, you know, just from a couple inches. You just gotta drop it like it's hot. Like what? Drop it like it's hot. Like it's hot? Like it's hot. Now be sure with your elastic thread that you are actually passing the thread through the connection points of your bobbin case because it's a little bit thicker than normal thread and if you miss any of those connections, that's also going to give you shearing sadness. Not today. Now, on this machine here, which um, my friends just so happen to have in their home for, um, well, I want to say it's for my personal use when I come over. They actually bought it because they thought they might be sewing, but maybe they need to watch a couple of our tutorials. This machine usually sews at about a five on the top thread tension. When you're shirring, you want to up that tension, and I like to up it to about an eight and a half. You should play with the tension on your machine at home. You need to do a couple of test samples. You need to play sewing scientist for a little bit and get some cross grain samples cut out, some little squares of fabric, and do two to three rows of shirring with tension set on the top thread a little higher on each pass okay, on each square of fabric and find out what's the best setting for your machine because every machine is different. Let's get to sewing up some shirring lines. We are finally ready to sew. Y'all, like 90% of sewing is not sewing. You really do have to shirr a lot of lines of fabric to get any sort of a tube top look. For example, just to cover my bust here, this is 13 lines of shirring. So, you know, patience. Patience is key. You don't look very patient. I have a lot of patience. Do you? You said a couple of hours. Yeah. Do you want to eat? Don't worry about it. Why don't you go make us a cocktail? <laughs> I gotta make some dinner. I'm gonna be ready. Let's sure. You're going to place your presser foot right along the edge of that top stitching of that top edge and then sew a line of shirring using that as your guide. And henceforth, you're gonna use your presser foot as your guide. People, whenever you can, use your presser foot as your sewing guide. It's right there for you. Begin your sewing within the seam allowance of your tube top because um, it's a tube top. It ain't that deep. It's not rocket science. You don't have to worry too much about your seam allowances being exact mundo, okay? I don't know why I'm getting Fonzie. We've been watching Friends again for like the sixth time through and we just saw the episode where Phoebe was in the doctor's office and the doctor was all about Fonzie, so sorry. Backstitch at the beginning and the end of each line of shirring just to lock that elastic in. 
I'm raising my stitch length to a four, which is the longest stitch length I have on this machine. I'd say go from anywhere from a four to a six length at the beginning and the end of each line of shirring. Leave thread tails of about two inches. You're gonna notice that your first line of shirring actually doesn't look that cinched up and elasticated. That's okay. As you keep going with your lines, they're going to get more and more shrinky and elasticated. It's like magic. Continue sewing rows of shirring using the previous line of stitching and your presser foot as your guide. As you increase your lines of stitching, you're going to find that your fabric is becoming more and more cinched. Gently place your hands on either side of your presser foot and stretch the fabric to keep it flat underneath the foot. The front rectangle is done and now we have to repeat the same process for the back rectangle, which is the back of our tube top. It's not going to take very long, though. Really, it's not. <laughs> We're going to sure up the back rectangle with the exact same amount of stitching lines. I've done 13 on the front rectangle, so I'm going to do 13 lines on the back rectangle. And I'm going to do it fairly quick because somebody's getting impatient. He might be hangry. There we go, two rectangles all shirred up. Now to join these two rectangles together, you could sew them up right sides together and call it a day. I like to be a little bit extra. I'm going to give these seams the French seam treatment. And if you'd like an in-depth look on how to do a French seam, well, we got a video for you right here. but I'll whiz you through it like real quick in a little montage and go. Trim away all of those thread elastic tails. Pin your rectangles wrong side of your fabric facing, matching up the top of your tube top, all of your shearing lines, and extending down towards the bottom of your tube top. I've switched over to regular thread in both my needle and bobbin. Now we're going to sew at a quarter inch from the top of the tube top down to the bottom. Trim that seam allowance in half. Fold that top in on itself so that right sides are now facing. Pin it up again along that seam line. And sew it up again at 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. When I'm going over my shirred elastic lines, I like to backstitch over every single line of shirring to be sure that I am locking in those elastic threads. All that's left is to hem the bottom of our tube top. Just like the top of our tube top, you can fold it in a half an inch and then again a half an inch and stitch that folded edge down. You can fold it up a full inch if you want. You can fold it up three inches if you want. This is why at the beginning of our tube top, you gave yourself plenty of length so you can try it on and decide where you want your top to hit. Maybe you went all the way to the ground with it. Maybe you decided you wanted a maxi dress and you're just gonna be swanning about with your cocktail. I might do that next. I might do that next. I can't do that now though. I should probably finish up with this. Now all we have to do is give our tube top a final press and then we are ready to wear it to dinner. Out. What? Get out. Okay, out. Okay, Get out. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>